welcome back to another Java tutorial and in today's video we are going to take a look at the while loop and the do while loop. We will also take a look at the for loop but we'll do that in another video. So to start let's go over what iteration is since while loops and for loops are both iteration. Iteration is the repetition of code for a certain number of times. A while loop is a type of loop that executes the code inside when a certain condition is met. This condition is a logical test, just like an if statement. If you remember about if statements, while the logical test is true, it'll execute the code inside. Or if that code is false, it'll skip that code and then it'll move on. Now, just like an if statement, the while loop only executes the code if the statement is true. But unlike an if statement, if the test is true and it reaches the end of the code inside, it'll perform the test again and while it's still true, it'll keep executing the code until that test becomes false. An example of a while loop is while using the JOption pane class, we can ask the user for a number of purchases when they go to a restaurant. And then we ask them for a tip, and then we calculate the tip, the tax, and then the grand total. This method would require something called a primer, or a way to start the while loop. We'll see all of this later on in the actual demonstration. As mentioned before, in some cases you'll need a primer before the while loop. A primer is something that will get the while loop started, and in the case of the restaurant calculation, as we'll call it, we need to ask the user for the first input to make sure that it isn't null. That way, if it isn't, we can go ahead and execute the code that's inside the while loop. Without that primer though, the while loop will never run. We'll see all of this in the demonstration in a little bit. A do while loop is an alternative and a reverse of the while loop. It'll execute the code first and then it'll test it to see if it repeats it. The do while loop, in the case of the restaurant calculation, wouldn't need a primer because it can execute the user input and test it afterwards. Infinite loops can occur when a test in a while loop or a do while loop will always be true. An infinite loop must always be avoided for a number of reasons. And one obvious reason is so that the rest of your code can execute. An example of an infinite loop is if you declare an int variable with the value of 5 and then test it if that variable is greater than 2. 5 is always greater than 2 so that loop will run indefinitely or until you run out of memory. To prevent an infinite loop, check to make sure that your test is always updated after each run. For example, having the int x decrease by 1 after each run. That way it'll stop when it reaches 2. Let's take a look now at an example of a while and a do while loop using that restaurant calculation. Okay, so let's take a look now a few demonstrations of while loops. We're going to do first the while loop and then we're going to do a do while loop. This demonstration is a simulation of when you go to a restaurant and you buy a number of items and then you have a tax and then you have tip at the end and a grand total. And to do this, we're going to be importing two classes, the Java text decimal format, so that way we can format everything nice and neatly, and then the Java swing J option pane, that way we can have a GUI, graphical user interface. So to first start off, go ahead if you're, if you're doing this along, initialize or instantiate the dollar variable to decimal format. Decimal format dollar gets the value of new decimal format. And inside here in this parentheses, I specified how I want it to be formatted. 0.00, .00 the standard way of how you actually read dollar values. And, and so I have also four variables here, a double subtotal, which is set to 0.0. .0. This is gonna be the running total of everything you purchase. The tax, the tip, and then the grand total. So this is the while loop. This is how you structure the while loop, while your test, and then your execution of the code. So first we create this other string here, this other string variable called input one. This is gonna be for the first while loop, and input one will get the value of the input of whatever it is your purchase is. J option pane, show input dialog, enter the cost of your purchase. And this here is the primer. As I was mentioning before, while loops in certain situations need a primer so that way they can begin the execution that it needs to run. So while the input one, which is right here, while it's not null, or in other words, while the user doesn't click cancel, then print out whatever it is he put in the purchase cost and then add that value to the subtotal. Now remember, since it's giving us a string value, we have to parse that as a double before we add it with the other subtotal. And then finally, 
we're going to ask the user again to please enter the next purchase or click cancel to stop. This is the next test so that way when it reaches the end of the code here, it'll go back to the while loop up here, back to the while statement, and it'll test it again. And if it's still not equal to null, then it'll go ahead and continue executing this until input one is null, which then when it does become null, it'll exit the while loop and then go down to line 50. Next, we're going to ask the user if they want to add a tip. And for that, we added, we have a new string variable called tip input. And then we have another J option pane that says enter a tip percentage without the percent sign or to click cancel to skip the tip. Now, if tip is not equal to null, meaning that they actually added a tip, then perform these operations. First, we're going to convert this tip input value as a double, and then we're going to multiply by 0 0.01. So that way it converts it to a decimal and then finally multiply it by the subtotal, getting the actual tip. And then lastly, we're going to format it using the decimal format, and we're going to convert that into a double. This is basically just converting it into a dollar format, into the 0, 0.00 format, and then putting it back into the tip variable. Next, we do the same for the tax, calculate the, sa calculate the tax, which is the subtotal times 0.07, format it just like we did with the tip and then assign it back to tax and then lastly we did the same with the grand total calculate the grand total which is subtotal plus tip and tax and then format it once more and then down here is where we print it out using the show message dialog using the GUI and then we print it out in the output dialog box now I'm gonna go ahead and run it and let's see what we get so enter the cost of your purchase $12.99 Enter the next purchase, $7.99, the next one, $3.49, and then let's click cancel to stop it. Enter the tip percentage without the percent sign, 20%. So as you'll see, the subtotal is $24.47, the tax is $1.71, and then the tip is $4.89. So your grand total is $31.07. And you'll see that it prints it out down here as well. So this is the way the while loop works. Now let's take a look at how the do while loop works. And we'll see how we don't need a primer, but we do need a test instead. Now, this is the do while. And as you can see, the structure is a little different. It has the do statement here, then two curly braces with everything that needs to be executed in here. And then finally, the while statement with a semicolon at the end. And then the while statement is the exact same as the normal while loop. The only difference is that there's a do in front of it. So we have here a string input to, this is for the second input. And as it moves down, it'll do all of this and then it'll test it at the end. It's basically doing it in a reverse order, executing first and testing at the end. Whereas a while loop tests at the beginning and executes at the end. Once it enters these braces here, it'll ask the user for the cost of the purchase without the primer. It'll print out whatever it is that they entered, and then it will first test if it's not equal to null, since this variable is a double, it can't contain a null value. And if it's not null, then it will, as before, parse that into a double and then add it with the subtotal. That way, giving it, it gives us the running total. And then after that, everything is pretty much the same. String tip input, ask the user what the tip is, test if it's not null, and if it isn't, convert it to an actual tip, and then format it. And then with the tax, it's the same. Get the tax, format the tax, get the grand total, and then format the grand total. And then at the end, it's the same. Print it out in the output dialog, and then show it in the show message dialog. So now let's go ahead and run it once more and we'll see, enter the cost of your purchase, $12.99. Let's put $4.99 and then $3.49. And now I'm going to click cancel. And you'll notice one difference here, how it says your purchase is null. And the reason why is because since it had that system out print line after the user input, it will print out a null value since you clicked on cancel. And that's something that you didn't see on the normal while loop. Now let's go ahead and enter a tip percentage of 
and then you'll see that the subtotal is 2147, the tax is $1.50, and the tip is $4.29. It works in the same way. The only difference is that in here, you don't need the primer, but you do need to test to make sure that you don't put a null value inside a double. This printout here does not throw any errors when there's a null value. But if we didn't have this, state, this if statement here, this will throw null pointer exception if the subtotal contained a null value. Let's go ahead and demonstrate what happens if we actually didn't have this if statement here. So now it's just going to do the input, then the system out print, and then it's going to do the subtotal without testing if it's a null value. Let's run it again once more. And I'm going to put 12.99, and then I'm going to click on cancel. And as you can see, there is an exception, Java Lang null pointer exception on line 109, which is right here. And the reason being is because it cannot contain a null value. That's the difference between using a while loop and using a do while. Even though the do while doesn't need the primer, unlike the while loop, you do need a test in here. We did need to test to make sure that the input is not null. That way we could actually put it inside the subtotal. So in today's video, we saw how a while loop and a do while loop are used. We also saw the difference between the two and how one requires a primer and the other doesn't. In the case of our restaurant calculation demo, in the next video, we'll take a look at another loop called the for loop, which is a bit more structured than the while loop. Until next time, take care and see you later.